Ladies and gentlemen, it's a new video. Um, it's a showcase this time. I gotta show you something very epic that I and just finished. It's uh, I finished creating my my first working prototype, practical prototype of uh, VIS, um, which if you don't know is um, VI scheduler, Vim scheduler, VI scheduler, something I don't fucking know at this point. Um, I kind of go with. Bo both of those naming conventions. Anyway, um, it's a calendar built into the terminal with n curses with the n curses library that you can use to well take um, note events and and such. And I was I just created the first this first um, prototype. Took me like how much? I want to see. Wait, let me see. Well, 12 commits, so it's from April 18. That's that was one month almost, almost one month, and it's built on top of it's built on top of C++. Some C now. In the last commit, I added some C code because uh, I added a kind of li like library for Base64 because I need it. I will explain later why, and it's made built on CMake um, to facilitate the process of building it. So <clears throat> yeah, it uses the anchors library as I've said and wait is there anything else? Anchors uh, oh yeah more utils. Wait, why do I need more utils again? I already forgot. I think it's because of the No, I don't know why I should I should look that up. But I think I do use more utils somewhere. I'm not sure where I forgot, but uh, there is certainly some place. In either case, um, this is the project, uh, SRC VIS. Okay, and it tells you, okay, you gotta specify a file to to open it. So SRC VIS um, main that calendar, for example, and it opens, and this is the the thing. If it's if the terminal will be too small, it will just tell you in the resolution too small. Please resize it, and you will, of course, resize it. And you will get a working um, a working uh, calendar. Now here you can use the Vim uh, key bindings to move around from day one to the final day of the month, and you can use so so it's H L J K, and then it's O for the next month. You can see down here that it increases the month, and uh, U to go down. O U O U, you know. And the green one you can you can probably you might you might have guessed already it's the uh, the current day so it tells you the current day you know the green one with that uh, yeah here you can find more information like which mode which day you are on which month which year you can switch modes for now uh, there's only the month view so you can only see the months because this is the one that I most certainly will always use but I'm gonna um, I look forward to implementing other modes as well uh, in the fu in the future um, then other sh shortcuts I implemented are G and capital G to go at the end or uh, the start of the month um, then what else um, W for right Q for quit um, then I to of course enter the insert mode and actually go into a terminal and into an um, editor and um, input some some event for example uh, today's uh, tasks for example and something and you input I don't know uh, go to the gym <clears throat> I don't know uh, school then work on the project then go out uh, sleep like a normal human being you know and then you write and quit and of course the resolution and then if you move around it will <clears throat> it will uh, sign it red as as in uh, there's an event in that in that at that day that you have to follow and uh, you can press I again to, to show it and you can also edit it and such and um, then you can use X to remove it. So for example, you have this and you just enter some garbage that you don't want. Um, you can remove it with X. 
right? By pressing X, you delete it. Uh, or if you want to, you can literally just remove the the every every line, and it will count it as deleted as well. So let me just delete, make sure everything is deleted. Wait, what the hell? Maybe like this. Never mind. I guess not. Uh, it was working before, I guess. Now it stopped working. Whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just use X at, at this point. This one works and will always work. Uh, with that, yeah, you also have uh, write and quit. And now if we reopen it with the same file, you can see that your progress is saved. And you can you can use the... you can, you can view the events. Um, if you take a look at the main that calendar file, you will see that how it, how this um, program stores your data with the event, I mean the day, space as a delimiter, and then the um, uh, what the hell is this? Uh, base sixty four value. That's why I included the base sixty four library because we have base sixty four stuff, and it has to base sixty four before writing to the file or decode before reading from the file. Uh, and so yeah. This is actually the thing I wanted to showcase in this video because I think it's super, super interesting. Uh, and I guess it's because it's the last commit that I did. It's literally implement basic writing feature, implement basic reading feature. So if you go to project CIS and go here and vim and go to engine.cp, go into your input handle, which is where I uh, handle all the inputs. If it's the universal, it will do the universal one. Uh, then, depending on what view mode we're in, uh, you know, it will uh, it will go to that function and have different um, shortcuts depending on which mode we're in. But those read and write should be in here, except, well, read should be at the start when you're opening a file, so yeah. So down here, when we have the write, the, the W, it will go to the write calendar, and here it basically works. This is basically, I think, th there's probably a better way to write this, right? But this is currently the only way I managed to solve it, so <clears throat> it literally closes the calendar file, which is a file that we use, that we um, ad open at the, start of the pro at the start of the program to read from it, to, you know, uh, import the events. We will close it, we will reopen it as... Um, as in with out and trunk um, flags, so that it gets trunked and that we are able able to write to it. If it failed, just let us know. Else, go to the uh, to every event in the events map, which is literally just an events map, uh, STD map. That um, you know, it's calendar information and then string string for being the event. So the stuff that you enter into the the vim or into the text editor and calendar information just being a structure um for uh, saving the current day the current month the current months the current days in the current month and the current year you know then with that um yeah it just goes through the whole map and it creates an output line which will be a string stream and um and the information date it takes the the date in the events map then it uh encodes the uh the the event associated with the this date and then it just kind of um for formats it in some sort of way this is currently the best way i managed to format it i'm not sure if there's a better way probably with s print f problem is that's not really a c C++ function, so I don't really know if I should do it. I could in theory, but I don't know. Um, for the love of God, if there's um, an experienced um, C++ developer out there watching this, please let me know, or in some sort, of, some way or another, um, because I'm curious to see some, you know, some uh, criticism on this, some constructive criticism. It would be really helpful. So, um, yeah, that would be super cool. And then yeah, you just write to the to the calendar file, and that's it. And then return true, of course. Then on the main.cpp actually, 
we have we should be calling open calendar we're checking the args it will uh, open calendar on our v1 which is the file that you add or send and in this case it will open it with just the input um flag and then uh it will say the calendar file location you know why because going to the engine.cpp this is really not the best way i wanted to do it but um i didn't want to save the file name somewhere but i had to in the case of write uh write calendar because we have to when opening opening it again we need to know what location we have to open or if there would be a function like this calendar file that reopen maybe no Whatever, I, I might have to look that up, but there's probably none, so yeah. I, I literally am forced to um, store the calendar file location. In either case, then if it fails, just return, we don't give a shit. Uh, that, it will probably fail in case there's some um, permission error or um, just the file uh, doesn't exist, in which case we will create it once we actually save stuff into it um, with the W shortcut and then we just have a std string line and it will for every uh, line it will parse it by parse i mean just uh using str talk uh, i mean token for <clears throat> in a very dirty manner so yeah i don't really particular i don't particularly like this piece of code uh, because it's really prone to errors in my opinion if you go for example to project vis cd build and you do nvim test calendar for example here is some stuff that i was testing with and that i was playing with and if you do some random if you just add some random garbage and do src uh vis test calendar oh what the fuck that's strange last time i did it it was actually kind of broken so maybe i have to add more stuff uh, not gcc what hell src vis test calendar I guess no. Um, oh yeah, right, right, right. Uh, because here is the problem. Because um, going to the tokens, okay. If the token size is not equal to two, it will return. So that's good. At the moment, I'm doing um, that's not calendar. I'm just having one. It just returns one because not and not two, because this one token. You need. I need to put the delimiter in there to actually break the software. Because why? Because um, uh, here it will parse the tokens zero, which is this one, uh, as a date, as date, and it will go for every for every dot in it. Um, it will treat it will convert it into a into an integer uh, with w through the sts to i function. And uh, you can see that this is not actually a an integer, so it will it, it actually breaks it from those an exception. So uh, let's see it not working. Yes, that's not calendar. Uh, yeah, it was an exception. Core dumped. Um, and yeah, I would I'll have to probably fix this. It's put some sort of check if it contains um, just numbers and such. But yeah, so far so good. I guess I, I the project so far works for me. It's not like it's intended to work for ev everybody because if like the, if there would be some malicious actor trying to you know in inject some malicious code into it, it's just for me personally to uh, work with calendars because recently I was degoogling myself. By that I mean I was removing myself from. From Google as much as possible, <clears throat> ignoring the fact that I uh, I do um, encrypted backups to Google Cloud, <clears throat> which I mean they're encrypted, so I'm technically safe, safer than just sending them my own data. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> um, excluding that one, I'm trying to minimize the num the the size of uh, data that I'm giving to Google and to, I mean, every company in general, so yeah. There is that. 
And ladies and gentlemen, with that, I think that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you this fucking cool tool that I made because I think this is literally the best project that I did so far. The most useful, I should say. The most useful because this is literally the, the one that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis now. And <clears throat> this is, in my opinion, the joy of actually coding on, on those kinds of projects because it's... Um, the second that you code something that you you're going to actually use yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, that's when the joy comes. Because oh my lord, you you can actually see the use usefulness of the of the of the program that you're that you're developing. So yeah, uh, that was it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I guess uh, see you next time.